Thank you, Jan Brandt, for this outline of a reform of the United Nations with the goal of increasing the adaptiveness of international governance to environmental concerns. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Laurence Tubiana. Uh, she is the director of the Institute of Sustainable Development and International Relations at uh, Po, where she is also a professor for sustainable development. She has previously served as senior advisor on environment to the Prime Minister Jasper and has conducted a number of international negotiations on environment for the French government. Uh, in her academic career, she has been, before her current position, director of research of, at the Institute of Agronomic Research in Paris. Uh, and uh, she created and is the editor-in-chief of uh, the journal Le Courrier de la Planète, uh, Planète and has published several articles and books on environment development and international uh, issues. Laurence is talking about essentially the basic institution of modern days and that's the sovereignty of the state and how this one has to be changed in order to make institutions more adaptive. Thank you for coming, Laurence. Thank you. I, uh, differently from Jan has talked about uh, uh, UN institution and, and the necessity of reform of having organization and institution at global level. Uh, I, I am personally a globalist as, as, a, as a thinker. And, uh, but what I, I'm looking at, and because I'm very much involved in the negotiation of, again, of global warming or climate change, uh, I have to recognize that states play uh, definitely a role and that the sovereignty is certainly one of the major problems we are facing to create and to foster international action. So I'll try to share some thoughts with you on what, what can we think about actual definition of sovereignty uh, in front of these global challenges and uh, uh, is this sovereignty still, or, or again, a major obstacle, or at the contrary, are we finally seeing a redefinition of the sovereignty of nation states that can help if redefine uh, the collective action, for example, on this climate change issue. Classically, um, uh, normally when you t talk about environmental governance and uh, international relation, uh, environment is really uh, uh, the case where um, sovereignty is, is the case of erosion of sovereignty. Uh, states have less control over the borders in environmental matters, uh, even less control than on trade and human migrations. Uh, efforts to limit human impacts on the environment and to combat environmental damage call for action that transcend borders. So environmental protection classically in the debate challenge very often national sovereignty. And so the general rule is that sovereign states are reluctant to identify with the logic of collective action. So in a way, fighting global warming, if I take these two examples, uh, global warming and protecting biodiversity are two examples of this ambivalent relationship between states. And, and sovereignty and environmental protection. We have seen a lot from Stockholm Conference to the different convention of Rio, uh, the notion that uh, really uh, we, we need to, to foster collective action. But how this uh, global uh, warming, for example, or, or erosion of biodiversity in, interact with sovereignty? Uh, on, the, on the climate, on the global warming, I think the case is very interesting. Sovereignty is about control of territory, uh, absolute control and legitimate control of territory. What we see with glo global warming is that um, migration of plant and species, melting glaciers and the chain reaction linked to that are really can lead to population shift, political crisis, pandemics, but again, are modifying the, the sheer uh, geography uh, and the sheer notion of territory. So 
a, a global phenomenon like, like climate change is interacting not only on the, on the flows of the independence, independence for, uh, of the, uh, between uh, countries, but globally is shifting, is redefining the, the notion of the basic building block of sovereignty, which is territory. Um, one aspect very interesting in this discussion of sovereignty and, and global issues is that uh, the, the risks of, the, of, of these global challenges are more often have been evaluated by networks, global networks like uh, NGO networks, uh, scientific networks basically, which have didn't pay, uh, didn't uh, develop their, their own work within the, the notion of the sovereign states. They are the incipient notion of uh, uh, global networks and these global networks have shown and, and signaled the global problem and, and the necessity of reaction to, 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 to fight this. Uh, and for these two reasons, the, the notion that objective uh, impacts on sovereignty are, are made by this global change and the representation of this global change are impacting with the, uh, through the uh, collective thinking created by the global networks makes that uh, that interfere, uh, of course, strongly with the attributes of sovereignty. The response to this global challenge, of course, will have to interact very deeply with sovereignty. Again, taking the example of climate change, what are we discussing now in the process of the negotiation is about a huge change in domestic policies, in urban planning, in the energy uh, production and consumption, in, uh, in norms and standards and technological process, and, and basically, we, we are taking about, we are speaking about, or negotiating about uh, the core, the core elements of the state power, which are really a, the main aspect of domestic policies. Is a little like the discussion we have had in the past 20 years on trade is now taking place because of, of global warming. So, so the pressure to have a discussion on internal domestic policies at international level blurs the differences between interna international sovereignty and domestic sovereignty. But at the same time, we, this profound need in the change and the profound change in the models of production and consumption uh, is, cannot, is and cannot be decided uh, outside uh, the, the social compromise, the social space within the nation state. We don't have any place out there to discuss a global social contract where we could redefine this notion, these core elements of the policies, of the public policies. So in a way, we, are, we have this tension between the profound change who have to be carried on, and it's not only about an interaction uh, among states, but a more deep transformation of the society and the, the way you have to discuss this transformation about the society has to take place in some place where you can interact between state and citizens. Because of this very strong dimension of the discussion of the, the change uh, inside uh, the, the domestic scene, and the necessity came coming from, at the same time, the global factors and the global representation of these factors. Uh, we, we see that state very often try to protect be, uh, and use the rhetoric of sovereignty to protect them from any interference from the outside. During negotiation, for example, of climate change, the state very often play this sovereignty card when they want to oppose actions that will affect their territory. Very good example, this discussion on the carbon tax, conducted very early on as part of the discussion of the Kyoto Treaty.